Hello everyone and welcome to our Young Health Watch Central Bedfordshire podcast. Today we're going to be looking at eating disorders, specifically concerning young people, although eating disorders can affect anyone at any age. The goal of this podcast is to inform, raise awareness and address misconceptions around the topic and hopefully, dear listeners, serve as a source of support and comfort for anyone who's going through or knows someone struggling with an eating disorder to let them know that they're not alone. Before we start the main body of our podcast, I feel that we should provide a trigger warning. If you've struggled with any type of eating disorder or had an experience with a friend or loved one, please be aware that we could be discussing potentially upsetting topics. So take a break if you need to and seek help online or talk to someone in person. You can always come back to this if you'd like. So, shall we get started? My name's Gemma. I'm a student in education and a volunteer with Young Health Watch. Today, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Heather, another volunteer, and Eleanor, the Youth Engagement and Volunteer Officer for Health Watch Central Bedfordshire. Our guests include Marie, a CAMS nurse, Oliver and Anthony, Debbie and Evie, and Cathy, a teacher. So we have a variety of perspectives. But before we hear from our guests, it's important to remember that we understand what an eating disorder is and how it can affect us. The NHS defines an eating disorder as a mental health condition where you use the control of food to cope with feelings and other situations. And for many, this coping mechanism can develop into an unhealthy relationship with food and abnormal eating habits. There are simple signs of what it could be like. It can manifest in physical symptoms, fatigue, tiredness. But everyone is different and everyone's case is unique. There are different eating disorders as well. So it's not necessarily losing weight. It could be gaining weight. For cases like bulimia, where purging may occur, actually it might be that there is no change in weight, but it's the control of food that's the part here. So overeating, purging, bulimia and anorexia nervosa are examples of some eating disorders, to name a few. And over COVID, obviously, there's probably been a lot more cases over lockdown due to people being indoors, maybe having to deal with other things unrelated, psychological causes that can eventually cause or manifest or lead to an eating disorder. So we're here with Oliver and Hi. his dad, Anthony, today. Um, yeah, guys, how are you doing? This fine afternoon, I think it is by now. Well, I'm yeah. doing all right. What about you? Yeah, good. <laughs> really good, thank you. Yeah. And do you want to tell us a bit about yourselves then? Your experience, Oliver? Well, my name's Oliver and I've been experiencing anorexia since, uh, well, I don't really know, but I got diagnosed in September. Yeah, I think you were diagnosed in September. Yeah. I'm, I'm Anthony, Oliver's dad. Um, so, yeah, well, Oliver wanted to come here today just to share his yeah. experience so far. Uh, he's, um, he's still going through the eating disorder. It's still an everyday battle uh, for Oliver and, and us. Um, but Oliver just wanted to sort of share. Uh, Spread with some awareness guys. about it. Yeah, just to try and help out with other people if he could. Yeah, like, like we said, like before we recorded this, I think it's it's really great that you're doing this and it's much appreciated. Um, and I'm sure many people listening to this or however many actually hear this, um, they will appreciate your perspective. Yeah. So, I mean, just w- do you want to talk about your kind of experience that you've had? So, obviously, you've, have you been diagnosed? Yeah. Okay, so how how did that come about? Um, yeah, well, my teachers realised something was wrong. Um, and then w- w- one day we got went back to school after summer, they realised that I was looking a bit faint and I was walking a bit funny because I couldn't really walk in a straight line. So they took me into the office and I was kind of in like a vulnerable spot at that point. So I was just, t- I just like told her everything because I just needed to get it out of my chest. Mm. And then she um, um, like contacted the hospital and they called my mum and I got admitted. I had um, my first admission was for six days, and then um, and then after that I was doing well, and then I kind of got control of all my eating again, and then I kind of fell back into my old ways, and I got a lot lower weight and a lot more ill than I did for the first time. And then I had to go and do a longer admission for longer than two weeks. But that was quite recently. But I've been out of hospital for how long, Dad? Uh, you've probably been out of hospital for about five weeks now. Yeah, so um, I've been doing well at the moment, but yeah. So you're feeling in a good place at the moment? Yeah, at the moment, yeah. Good. Okay, um, so if you don't mind me asking, kind of when you said you came back after the summer, when did it first start, like the problems with kind of eating? They came around, I'd, I'd say it kind of, it came around like t- start of 2021, and I just started, it started off like eating healthier and then it kind of escalates into wanting to get into good shape and then it escalates in, in getting as lean as possible. It's not, as for, with, for me personally, it wasn't just about being skinny. It was more about um, having like the pressure to have like abs and 
muscles yeah, and stuff. Like, I feel like um, with maybe, I, I don't know, I'm not a guy, but like there's a, there's a either like you're built or you're toned. Toned, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, I got I got obsessed with that and I keep on trying to lose it. And then when you when I got to that point when I was like, I've got like no body fat, I started going wanting more to get and then it just went to be wanting to be as skinny as possible. It just it changed over time. But it, I would ca- I think it ca- it came around when I started doing martial arts. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really remember. It was quite a long time ago, but I've had the issues for a long time. But it wasn't as bad at the time. Yeah, and do you um do you find that maybe social media and kind of like the idea of um what I don't know what what guy should kind of look like? Do you think that's influenced you? Yeah, I think there is quite a lot of toxic stuff online, and um, a lot of well, I learned a lot of how to calorie count and a lot about nutrition and stuff and how to lose weight and all that kind of stuff online. So I'd say it's a bit dangerous if you're on the wrong side of it. But, um, yeah. How how did COVID affect you? Was COVID a trigger or anything? Or No, I wouldn't say it was a trigger, to be honest. Um, I think... I don't, I don't really... I don't... I think when was COVID? 2019? Uh, yeah. 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 I don't think there was, I didn't have any issues in 2019. No. Just before, but it was came a bit later into like, later in a few next years. I mean, it's possible that COVID could have impacted, uh, had an impact on Oliver because School, there, was, maybe. there was a lack of social, socialising. Um, Oliver was taken away from and, you know, that definitely would have had an impact on any, any child or any person that went through COVID. So, how, how, how have you find the, how have you found the experience yeah. then? Well, I just wanted to say that Oliver said sort of how when you asked the question, how did it come about? I mean, yeah. um, we it, it kind of it could have been it was happening for a while without myself and Oliver's mum uh, without us knowing. Um, we went on a on a summer holiday abroad in uh, uh, would have been Corfu. Yeah, to Corfu. We went August last year. Uh, during the summer holidays and it was at that point that we realized that there was a problem um, obviously Oliver Oliver was very um, sensitive around taking his clothes off by the pool and and just eating going out for meals in the evening um, he we would struggle to get him to eat meals so he would um, prior to that Oliver had complete control of his own meals we left we left we didn't realize there was a problem Oliver was making his own lunch his dinner his breakfast and yeah, you know, I suppose as parents we thought, oh, brilliant! He's grown up. He's now <laughs> yeah. nearly fourteen, and he can cook his own dinner. Excellent, one less job for us. But without us knowing, all of this was happening without us realizing it was happening. So it came about. Um, well, we, we we realized there was a problem while we were on holiday. We came back from holiday um, just before you think we were bad parents, and and we just <laughs> sent him to school, and the school found out. No. We we went. Don't think that we went to a GP, and the GP said he was fine. And we had no help from our GP. They said he was fine. We knew he wasn't. Right. right, off you go. No problem. Um, so it was then he went back to school, and the and the and the support teacher or the teachers realised there was an issue. He was falling asleep in his classes, and he I like, could see that he didn't have the energy that he should have. So the um, so the lady at Oliver's school um, referred him to the hospital. And I think when that process happens, the hospital have to listen. Somebody has to listen. They they the we feel let down as parents by the system because the system didn't listen. The system, the GP, wouldn't listen to us. It's a teacher. The GP didn't really do much. He just said I was underweight and didn't make gain weight. That's all he really did. Yeah, whereas... So the the school referred Oliver to the hospital. Um, At the hospital, phone us, get down straight away. Stop what you're doing, get there now. So we rushed Oliver into hospital and within not much time at all after a check with the doctors, Oliver was sort of on support machines and mm. he had monitors on him wow. so oliver was in a really bad shape mm. at that time and it's, it's sad that you went to the gp and they kind of didn't do anything and it, it no, took it took you having to go to just said um yeah your weight's low gain weight there was nothing else did you push either of you or did you just feel like okay well we've checked that course out like well at the time you know we were fine oliver what we what you i think what you've got to remember with a, with an eating disorder is oliver doesn't think he's poorly Oliver thinks that that's what Oliver wants to be. So we're we're saying, as parents, we can see that he's losing weight and you look poorly, Oliver. But when we say Oliver, you need to eat. Oliver obviously doesn't want to eat. So 
he doesn't realise he's poorly. What he thinks so, he's doing is the right thing. The, s- the second time, though, the so my, before my second admission, when I was a lot more physically unwell in my first admission, that was where I was completely blinded with anorexia. Like, I couldn't see. I didn't see. I couldn't see how skinny it was. I look back in pictures now and I see, oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's a sense of being in denial. We've we've had that with um the other person. Crazy. It's in. like you've been brainwashed. Yeah. Like, I, I think about that then and I was like, what was I thinking? How are you now? You seem in a place that you understand that you're ill now. Yeah, uh, um, I've, I'm okay now. I'm not doing the best. I have heart bad days and there's some good days, but other than that... Um, yeah, but I, th- I think it's a great step that you came that you yeah. came here today to kind of <coughs> raise awareness and, you know, it's brilliant. You can kind of feel brave enough to talk about it. So, yeah, yeah you should be proud to do that. Well. Yeah. yeah, it's not easy. And so you were saying um, you adm- you were admitted the first time and then you were admitted again. So what what happened between the first and second time then? So the first time I got admitted, when I got out, I was doing well. I wouldn't really say I was doing well at all. I was basically just following the plan, but I wasn't doing well mentally. And then I eventually got control about it again, and I started to lose weight, a lot of weight. Um, I think I went from. Um, 52 kilos to 45 and since from my that's what I got made on my second admission but I did it I didn't I got away with doing it because I was doing something called water loading for my weigh-ins I was drinking lots of water and um, tricking the scale so I had a lot of time to lose more weight and um, yeah I um, just c- couldn't I just couldn't stop and I w- they realized something was going wrong and they you couldn't really do anything could you there was no really helping me. I was just gonna shout and scream and kick off and just yeah. It, um, so uh, when, when Oliver came, he was in hospital in September and um, the first time around, he came out of hospital. Um, we were on a plan, an eating plan. So we were dealing with the eating plan, and um, Oliver was putting weight on, as he said. He was putting, he was water loading, so he wasn't the weight that we thought he was. He actually wasn't. He was tricking way the lower. system. Oliver's always been quite actually quite open and honest about the whole process, he, you know, he would say, he would go into a meeting, have him water load, and when we walked out, he said, oh, I'd, he'd tell us. You know? yeah. So we, he was being very honest about it. But I think then what happened was Oliver started to gain weight. Brilliant. We thought, excellent, it's fixed, you know. Mum and dad at home, self, mum, so we, we took it. We, t- we backed off. He started taking control of his meals again. But all he, what he was doing at this time was manipulating us, and we didn't realise it. So very, very manipulative disease and the, he manipulated uh, not he because the way the best way that I can explain it is there's two people you know, we have Oliver and we gave it we gave him a name but we called him Gary but Oliver doesn't like calling <laughs> him Gary so it's just uh, it's the eating disorder so there's Oliver and there's an eating disorder and Oliver was battling with the eating disorder inside him and we were also we were battling with the eating disorder yeah. and we we knew we knew when it was Oliver talking and when it was the eating disorder talking and uh, and the eating disorder manipulated us to think that everything was okay when it wasn't, and then things started to t- to deteriorate. And um, it was the it was the sixth of January. It was actually Oliver's fourteenth birthday, sixth of January this year. We went for a cams meeting, and um, the plan was we were having the cams meeting. We didn't really want it his birthday, but it was the only time that we could do it, uh, or cams could do it. So. so yeah, go on, Oliver. You, do you want to explain what happened? Got there and I came there angry because well, it was my birthday and I wanted to celebrate it and not have to. Because I knew, I knew I'd go to hospital that day. Yeah, I, it would, because I knew, like, I couldn't water load anymore. It would just oh. wouldn't. There's too much weight. I'd have to chug in water. So I went in there and I came in angry. I wanted to leave. I got weighed. I did. They do like blood pressure. Blood pressure. Is it blood pressure? Yeah, and stuff. And um, yeah, he said everything's like. What they, they did it like a traffic light system, didn't they? Yeah, it was all red. everything was, was red. like red warnings. Weight, um, pressure, all that, whatever you call it. And then, um, so I got, um, they gave me the option to wait till Wednesday because um, my, was he a counsellor? So this was on a, f- on a Friday we went in and um, I think, um, yeah, our, our cams, uh, you know, the guy that we, that we deal with at cams. He um, gave me three days, I think it was, to um, change something or I um, might, because uh, he's he gave us he gave me three days as he said to me you got three days to change it 
because it's your birthday, I don't want to admit you on your birthday. But if it doesn't, if nothing changes in those three days, you're gonna have to go. But I could, I couldn't do anything at home. I wouldn't be able to follow the plan. So I just, um, I just went, and then my mum, me and my mum had a chat when we got home, and I was like quite emotional. And um, I kind of admitted to her that I was hiding food in my bedroom, oh, wow. and stuff. And then she found it all, and then <coughs> um, she called to my, um, the what was it, care? I don't know what you call them. And yeah, then the phone, well, phone yeah, cams and said, look, cams. we need we need to admit Oliver wants to admit himself to hospital. He he literally, well, when we walked out of that cams meeting, we kind of Oliver broke down in the car park, and it was a very difficult. It was very difficult for me. Yeah. Well, really difficult for Oliver, obviously. But I chose to um, go. I chose just to get sent there that day instead of having to wait three days and get sent. Oh, so you went on your birthday in the end? Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to go over and done with because as soon as I get there, as soon as I'll be out, you yeah. begin the recovery, or you'll just get out of just the get out of hospital. Because there was no way I'd get an outfit. Either way, I'd have to go on Wednesday. Or no, I'd have to go there on like Monday. Or I'd have to go there today. So I just wanted to get in there as early as I can, so I'd be able to get out earlier. So how long were you in hospital at that point? Fifteen days. Um, I tried. They were, I tried. I were, I for the first twelve days, not for twelve days. Um, the first six days. Sorry, I was um, to manipulating the. F- the meal plan that I was picking all the lower calorie things. I was changing fruits to lower calorie fruits, and I was trying my hardest. And I, I didn't really gain weight in hospital for a long for a long time. So then, until they found out what I was doing, and then everything got upped, and then I was pretty much screwed. So I had to just follow it. Um, it was really hard. Sometimes I had to have some meal like like um, forty sip things to into the meals. It was it was difficult, but I managed to get through it. Okay. So is that the last time you've been in hospital? Yeah. And that was uh, well. He went in on the sixth of January. What was well, it now? It's end of February now. So yeah. he went in on. So it's still very fresh. You know, yeah. we're still. But I've gained a lot of weight since hospital. But and yeah. kind of where do you where do you see things in the future then? Yeah. Kind of moving forwards. I'm not sure at the moment. It's still a bit too early to to tell. Yeah. You but know. you know, you're, you're taking steps, and it's you know, it's great. You're kind of here today. Yeah. Um, how d- how do you find it's affected your relationship? With your family and your friends? Well, I've always been close to my dad and um, and Alexa were in that relationship. I would hate him, I'd swear at him, I'd kick him, I would do I'd do all sorts of nasty things. My mum, she was she didn't really want to fight with me, so it didn't really change anything. But uh, yeah, it ruined quite a few relationships. So I was but yeah. But you're here together today, so this is, you know it, it's got better. <laughs> yeah. And how how did right how did you find it, um, Anthony, as a parent? Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 a farmer's son, you know. I I'm, I'm a big eater. I you know, I it, 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 well, it's really difficult for me to understand. So and it still is, you know. Every day's a learning day. Yeah. Every day's a school day, should I say? So yeah, it was. Um, you know, when it first came around, it was like, well, he's, he's losing weight. You need to eat. Oliver, just eat something. You know, what's wrong with you? Just just yeah. do it. Well, I can understand why he wouldn't do it. You know, it's just didn't make sense to me. It was, and I, I found myself getting angry with him because he's doing this to himself. This is what I thought. You know, you're doing it to yourself. You're being silly, boy. Eat, you know, eat some food to make you better. And, but you know what, what I did and how I acted at, at the start I, was the wrong thing to do. I, I realise that now, and. And you know, I'm still learning. It, it's and I think that when I really realised, and it took quite a few weeks to to understand it. Didn't even know what a calorie was. I didn't know. <laughs> really? I never. I've never. I've never been. You know, I've always been quite physical and active. Yeah. I always played football, rugby, and I've. You know, I'm I'm a terrible eater. I eat all the rubbish and and in the world. It never bothers me, and I've managed to get away with it. Just about. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the fittest person, but you know. <laughs> I don't really mind what I eat, and so I've never, I've never worried about calories or anything like that. And I can understand why somebody would, and that made it a challenge. But I think when I, f- the, when I, the turning point for me, from trying from under to, to understanding what was actually going on was when I realised that, you know, there's the, like I said, there's two people. This isn't Oliver. You know what? I'm, I'm not dealing. I'm not trying to deal with Oliver because he's being awkward and. You know, Oliver wants to be like this. Oliver is having a in, in a battle within himself, and as parents, we need to support Oliver with the battle that he's having, um, because Oliver doesn't mean to do what he's doing. Yeah. 
and I think that was that was kind of the turning. And this was you know, earlier on this year, at the start of the year, probably around around sort of Christmas time, that we kind of realised that you know the, the poor lad right. he's having he's having a right hard time here, and it's not his fault. Yeah, what, what do you think about that, Oliver? The kind of separate separate thing to you. I'd say it, it is literally like a constant battle in between your head because, like, you, when when I was given in hospital food, I had one side was saying just eat it so you can get out, and the other side saying no, don't eat it, you don't deserve it, it'll make you fat, it'll make you gain weight, wait, it's bad for you. It's you get loads. It's just like a voice in your head constantly battling. It's like two voices battling. It's not very easy to ma- manage, but it gets you get easier to manage when you're in a healthier place i guess yeah and have you got any advice for anybody else in your position or how you got into position or coping with it or how to handle time with your family any advice well if you are struggling i'd recommend talking to someone you trust and go and reach out for help if you can it's not for everyone i don't think but if if you're in like a critical place i'd say reaching out for help is probably the best way to go because it's quite hard to recover on your own because you don't want to recover, so mm. recovering your heart's going to be quite hard. So having someone supporting you is probably the best thing. Was there one thing that made you go, right, that's it, that light bulb moment? My second hospital admission when they were um, talking about sending me to a um, residential, that was when I was thinking, mm. no, I'm not going away somewhere far away from my family for months mm. and um obviously next week is going to be uh e- is it the eating disorders awareness yeah, yeah awareness week yeah, awareness. and um the focus i mean i saw on beats uh the website the focus is to do with men's mental health and kind of men's um perspective on eating disorders because it's a um, lot different to girls yeah the majority i feel like um the typical the stereotypical idea is that like girls suffer from it but it is also a thing with guys, and I feel like, especially nowadays, it's becoming more prevalent. What would you say about kind of the, a guy's position or a man's position on this? It's, it's a lot different. The stereotype is wanting to be skinny and no mu- muscles and stuff, but for boys, it's completely different. But then it's, it's similar in that aspect that you want to keep on losing fat because you always think you have too much fat on you. And you yeah. never think it's good enough. But... Um, I think it's different for everybody as well. It's I think yeah. it's eight, eighty percent of eating disorders, from what I understand, happen in in females and mm. and twenty percent in males. So that's not a very accurate ratio. I think that's what Dave said the other day. It was no, eight, it's eight out of ten. Eight out of ten are girls. But no, I got told when the, what some women talk, came to talk to me in the hospital about residential. She said every ten people, eight would be girls, two would be boys. So yeah. So I think um, and and from what we, you know, when I when asking all of the question. You know, what's it like for boys and girls? Obviously, he's, he's never been through it as a girl, so it's yeah. quite a hard thing to yeah. understand. And and there is lots of and there are there are a few different eating disorders. You know, o- the eating disorder Oliver's got could be completely different to the eating disorder it's another male's got mm-hmm. in the way that the way that he thinks and and what he does. There's yeah. lots of different traits. It's not always losing weight either. It could be gaining weight uh, yeah. over like over obsessive eating. Yeah, um, and then you've also got kind of purging involved. But you were saying about um, exercise. Do you think exercise is something that kind of over over obsessive exercise kind I, of went hand in hand? I had um I was very obsessive with exercise. I would do I'd set timers on my phone for every half an hour, and I would go and tell myself, do I have to do two hundred press ups, two hundred sit ups, two uh, five hundred jumping jacks? Because that was when I had cut off all cardio. So the best cardio I could do is running on the spot and stuff in the house, in my bedroom. You had to do that every half an hour. Every, every half an hour. Wow. Till I would say till eight in the morning till about six and I was, I'd be playing games with my mates and they would t- I would just I would be go out for like five minutes and then go and just do jumping jacks and press ups and um, Oliver would do this in our house without us knowing I would secretly do it around the corner I'd go um I'd ask I'd say I want to go to the park for fresh air and um not actually I would just want to go to the park to get extra steps in I was obsessed with steps at school I'd walk around the school because that was the place where I, I had no one telling me I can't do anything so I could keep on burning calories around school. Um, and I would just do anything to burn calories. And literally anything. Mm. How's school going now? Are you back at school? Yeah, I'm back in school on something called a reduced timetable, so I don't go over a full day. But, um, Is that um, good? Okay. It's been okay. So it's quite hard, but I'll, I'll get used to it. He's only been back for a week, so he's, wow, just, uh, yeah. first, so he's just done five days. And how, how are your friendships? So you're saying you're playing with your mates before? 
um, my mates at my new school, I don't have many because I was fairly new. But in my, my, all my closest mates are in another school, so I don't see them that much. But um, when I do, it's fun, I guess. Okay. And it, it has it strained your friendships at all? My like eating disorder. Your eating disorder? No, my mates are probably one of the biggest supporters for my eating disorder. They actually understand it and they've helped me quite a lot. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good. I mean, um, is, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Yeah, Anthony, have you got any advice? What would you advise to other parents? Um, yeah, I mean, I think what, one of the things that, that lots of people around you want to try and help and, you know, friends, family, people that have never been through it before. And it, I think it's really difficult for them because they, they try and give advice and they try and say things and you think, you know, really, you know, do you not think we've tried that? And yeah. But you kind of... You have to understand that when other people on the outside are looking in trying to help you, they don't know what you're going through. Until you've been through it, you you don't you will never understand it, uh, not properly anyway. Um, we had some support from a lady that had, uh, a mother that had been through it, going through it, um, and she helped us. She said she told us what she had been through and shared her experience. So I think you know that's un- that's one of the reasons why myself and Oliver are here today. You know, we, we realise we we know what how tough it is. And it's really tough. It, yeah. but, and there's been very, very, very low moments. And as one of us said, he's got angry, he's lashed out, he's got the physical, physical, the swearing, and it's it can be a very nasty, yeah. a very horrible place. And all of us got a younger brother who's who's four, and you know it's, he's a person. He's he's going through it as well. We're all going through it. Yeah. The, the eating disorder is the, it's almost like the disease is is in the household. It, it's yeah. it's there for all of us. Um, my. Kind of biggest advice is to is early days of it when you realise it you've you, it's, um, you just be patient try to understand that it's not what they're not doing it because it's what they want it's the eating disorder that's taking control and you're try to remember that there are two people in there try to look at it that you know try and support your the person your child. Um, and understand that they're having that battle inside them uh, and that's what you need to support them with. Mm. And then what we've found um, to to help recovery, you have to go through really tough times. You have to make small challenges and you to recover, it's going to be tough. But you, the problem won't go away unless you unless you break down those challenges and, and battle with them. Say, for example, you know, Oliver, Oliver's got quite a... Um, uh, quite a, sort of almost like a phobia of oil. He doesn't like cooking, cooking with, oil. with oil, olive oil, oil. He just doesn't like oil. So, or yeah, fried that, stuff, or fried stuff. So, and that's still there. You know, one of the challenges we've got at the moment is to try to introduce oils. Uh, you know, in the right. I also the right don't volume. like oily food. So I think I don't like greasy food because it makes me feel awful. Yeah. But, you know, like a roast potato cooked in fat. In the, uh, Oliver would. Oliver loves roast potatoes. But he couldn't bring himself to eat. But you know, we've we've got over that now. All of us now having roast potatoes, and it's it's, so yeah. it's small steps. Yeah. But when but when he's saying no, when the eating disorder saying I'm not having it, I'm not having it. You've got to go through the pain to to sort of conquer that yeah. that fear. Yeah. But because once you have, that's that's the step to recovery, mm. and you've got to break it down small steps, little bits at a time, mm. and you know, and, and it's it's not a quick fix. Yeah. You know, we're we're no. We're, you know, I wouldn't say we're nowhere near recovery, but we've made some really good progress in the last few weeks. A long way. There's still still a long way to go, and we yeah. we can't we can't take our eye off off of what, off the ball really at the moment. What's going on? Because that's what we did first time. I was going to say that's what you said you yeah. did. Yeah. We backed off. We thought it was fixed. It got it got and it got worse. Mm. Um, but I think I think it's great that you're making these small steps. But um, you were saying he's he was quite open when he was like water loading and stuff. So Oliver, what what changed it from being quite like secretive to then you opening up to your parents? What made you change? I got to the point where I just wanted help. I couldn't take it anymore, and it was getting too bad. I was, I felt too faint. I felt weak. I couldn't. I knew. I knew I needed help. I knew if I didn't, if I didn't ask for help, and actually, if I kept on lying, I would eventually die. I didn't. Mm. It was not. But if I was close to dying, but. It's, I um, just went. For, I just knew I needed help, and I needed someone to um, take the responsibility. 
because I found it really hard to ask for help. I needed someone to see and just get like get yeah. involved. So that's what they did, and that's what my mum did, and yeah. And you are you glad you did that? That you got the support? Yeah, I'm glad I got the support to actually yeah. get better. I think it's um, another thing to to bear in mind. It's, it's like it's a vicious circle. So mm. what happens when you stop eating? Your mind changes. You think differently, and when your mind changes, you think differently. You don't want to eat. So yeah. what was happening? He, he by him not eating, he was making his mind not want to eat, and we were just stuck in a circle. Yeah. And that circle was spiraling and spiraling out of control, and it did. And you have to try to break that circle. And the only way to break that circle is to is to force the eating to get him to get the nutrition in his body for his organs and his mind to think. Ah. And as soon as you as soon as you can do that, the mind starts to think better. The eating, getting them getting him to eat improved. Mm. And 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 we broke the circle and and you know sp- spiraled back into better control. Um, that that was one thing, you know, a big thing that I learned really that. Uh, that, that really helped mm, and I feel like it's still the thing you've done is you said it's, it's still a process it's not it's not ended it's still ongoing and it can kind of relapse again and you could you know be back in the same thing but you're on a path yeah but um like you said it, it's about keeping your eye on the ball I think and kind of being conscious and it's it's great you're acknowledging kind of maybe where what went wrong before and kind of how to improve yeah. moving forwards yeah and really? do you have any plans in the future like any fun things that are coming up um not this year, really. We just bought a new kitchen, so my parents are broke. But, <laughs> um, I don't know. You want to start getting back into doing physical activity, though, don't you? At the moment, all of us can't do too much exercise. Mm-hmm. But he <laughs> wants to start sort of getting into gymnastics and doing oh, yeah. things like that. So we need to sort of work on building up all of us' strength mm-hmm. and, and doing it in the right way. And um, it, it's, I think, you know, it, this could be something that Oliver could live with for the rest of his life. We don't know. But, but what we're trying, he's got he wants to do you know, count calories or track what he eats is fine but what we're trying to not doing an obsessive man it's not doing yeah. an obsessive way at the moment it become an obsession mm. and we need to get rid of the obsession it takes over a bit yeah. yeah well I think it's great he's got such a strong support network and it's great that you're conscious of all of this do you think um, you were saying about martial arts before do you think you'd ever want to get back into that again um, or not I, I think I would go back for a bit but there was a, it was good until like um, a lot of like little kids joined and they ruined yeah. everything. One of my mates, he was a black belt and he he was quick because he couldn't take his little oh. kids anymore. Yeah, because um I I did um I did Shotokan karate I think it's called. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> and literally, there's so many little kids and they only get up to like half the belts when they quit. That's so true. <laughs> so annoying. I did Shotokan for like six months and I moved to Tang Sudo and I did that for a year. Mm. But. Can yeah. you not go into a class with older children, or is it... You can. I was going to grade for my brown belt, but that's bef- like a week, one or two weeks before that grade, and I got admitted to hospital for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I got. I missed it, and I was fully behind, because I was grading for my yeah. brown, because I would have been able to go into other classes and do sparring and all that. But yeah, and then like every time you do it, it's, you have to do grading and stuff, yeah. and it's like a whole thing. Yeah. So. I do kickboxing. Yeah. <laughs> there you okay, go. Is there anything else you want to <laughs> add, Eleanor? No, I think that's good. Okay. Do you want to do your little... Yeah, so um, basically what we've done with the other people is we've had like a summary sentence. So for our listeners, if there's one thing you want them to take away from what you've said, what would it be? So we can start with you, Anthony. What would you say? Um, so one thing that... Was, uh, another like, piece of advice or uh, one just thing... Just like so the no, main no, like thing you want them to take away, like the overall point you're trying to bring across. It's quite a hard thing to do, but... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so remember to, to be patient. Remember that what's happening is not what... you. The, the your child or the person they don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. It's it's something that's it's something that's built up inside them that's forcing them to to act the way they act. So just remember, it's not they don't mean it, mm-hmm. and be supportive to them to try and conquer that. Yeah. Um, just stay strong. Yeah. yeah it's um it's a, it can be a long process. Mm-hmm. That's a brilliant message. What about you, Oliver? What would you say? I want to say if you're a guy experiencing an eating disorder, don't be embarrassed to go and ask for help because it is stereotypically said as a girl's illness, but it is dangerous. And if you think you're experiencing it, you need help. So don't be scared or embarrassed to ask for help. Yeah, well, that's brilliant. brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to talk to us today. No and we wish you all the best with your recovery in the future. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, thank you guys very yeah, much. No, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for our guests for sharing your stories. 
they're truly inspirational and definitely something to give food for thought for anyone out there please reach out don't hesitate to talk and share this with friends and family we want to kind of spread this as much as possible to raise awareness definitely spend some time look out for friends and family or anyone affected that may be suffering from an eating disorder or have experienced it in the past thank you for listening this has been a young health watch central bedfordshire podcast hosted by Gemma with her co-host eleanor and heather